Hey, what's up everyone? So today's video, you can probably tell from the title, we're still working on the Dodge Dakota RT and we're getting it fine tuned and ready to roll. So um, we're changing a lot of the sensors out at this point. A lot of them are working, but with these older vehicles, they don't necessarily throw a code right away if something isn't 100%. So we already changed the crank position sensor to a brand new OEM Mopar one. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below or above here. But today's video, I'm going to be replacing the O2 sensors on this truck. So I have two brand new Denso O2 sensors. I'll link them down below. Uh, they're pretty affordable actually, but I'm gonna replace both upstream O2s just since when you're not on the gas, um, it's using those O2 sensors to run. So it's using that data to uh, see how rich or how lean the vehicle is running and the computer is adjusting accordingly. So if that sensor is faulty and it thinks it's running richer, it's gonna try to lean it out and vice versa, right? So anyways, uh, we're not gonna work on it in the garage today because I have this thing on the lift and it's kind of a pain to get on lift and I have to do an oil change as you can see, I'm getting ready to change the oil in the S2000. So we're gonna work on it. Old school, same way you guys probably work on it. I have it on jack stands outside. Let me get to it. I'll show you guys where they're at and let's swap them. All right, so here is the vehicle. It is a Dodge Dakota with a 5.9 liter Magnum, I think I've told you guys. And we have it up on two jack stands and a jack supporting it. So we're good, we're safe. We're gonna go ahead and slide under there and get those O2 sensors. Okay, so depending on what exhaust you guys have, it might look a little bit different, but they're gonna be in the same general area. So on mine, we're gonna be looking just after the headers or the manifolds. You're gonna look for one on the driver's side, which is right here. So I've had these out before, so I'm not worried about them being stuck, but there is a special wrench for these, which gives you more than just two sides. So if yours has been in there for a while, you might wanna soak it in some PB Blaster, just so you don't have any issues. So there we go, like I said, mine are fairly easy to come out. So I'm gonna spin this off, out she comes, and then we'll look for our wire so we can detach it. You're gonna detach the clip. So if your sensors are a little bit older like mine are, the latch might be broken, so you might have to give it a little bit of help, which I'm having to do myself right now. So I'm just using a pick just to lift up on the latch. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like once I get it out. All right, so now she's off. Let's compare the old and new and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so here's what the latch should look like. It should have this where you can lift up on it. Whereas this old one, you can see the latch is broken off. So let's get this new sensor in here and get it done. Okay, so the sensor's tight, we'll connect our harness, and we'll tie up the excess. There we go, she clicked nice. We'll tuck it up, tie it up, we're done. All right, same thing here, guys. Let's take this one off. We'll loosen it, and then we'll just connect our sensor. All right, she's off. Let's get the new one. We'll screw our sensor in. We'll snug it up. And then we'll connect our harness. Okay, so we'll connect our harness, squeeze it together, until we hear the click, and we are done. All right, so the truck is all done, back together, we're good to go. Okay guys, so that's it for today's video. That's how you change the oxygen sensors, or O2 sensors on a Dodge Dakota. It's probably the same for the Dodge Durango and probably even the Ram 1500. They're all kind of in the same position, honestly. It's just depending on your exhaust and whatnot, they'll be a little bit um, maybe forward or back, but in the general location. So if you guys found this helpful or informative, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, one tip is you could put anti-seize -E on the threads. Usually new O2 sensors will come with that. Uh, mine have been off and on, and so there's already anti-seize -E on the threads, So, but not a bad tip as well. If you guys found this helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button too, and turn on that bell notification so you're notified of all the latest videos, and also check out the other videos already on the channel. See you on the next video.